Okay, hi, this is going to be a brief explanation on how to set up Cisco CMR with your already running Expressways with MRA. So let's get started. Uh, just a quick rundown here. We're going to create all the SIP trunks or zones um, in Expressway between the CUCM, Expressway C, Expressway E, and the Internet. Right, so there's a trunk. Um, in between call manager and Expressway C, there is a trunk in between Expressway C and E, and there's a trunk from E into the Internet. Um, we're going to... Okay, that's it there. All right, let's get started. I'm going to go through some of th these. are screen captures, uh, and I'll provide you with this presentation. But uh, I'm going to go through, instead of going all through all the screen, uh, uh, screen captures, I'm just going to take you through them live here um, on the screen. So the first thing, trunk configuration. We need a trunk to Expressway C. Okay, here's my trunk to Expressway C. There's nothing fancy here. Um, the thing I think that is uh, probably needed is SRTP. Uh, is allowed and um, let's see if you have a destination address that's a cluster that's going to be different I just have one that'd be a little bit different the expressway standard SIP profile just make sure the profile um, has BFCP um, on it um, uh, and what else Okay, let's take a look at this SIP trunk security profile as well. And I'm not remembering everything, but I just kind of want to show you guys everything just in case I I forgot something. You'll notice it on the screen. So we have the expressway non-secured. All right. Oh, that's one thing. Uh, one of the recommendations early on. I'm not sure if it's still on. Still. Um, um, uh, required today, but is to make the SIP port something different for Expressway because Expressway, when you d enable MRA, it creates a SIP trunk, kind of a hidden SIP trunk in Call Manager. So I haven't read it in the latest documentation, but it used to be when this first came out that you had to have the the port number on Call Manager different than 5060 because there was already a hidden SIP trunk. 5060 that you couldn't see in call manager that uh, went to the expressway C for the purposes of MRA. So again, that's um, that's the way I have mine configured, and it doesn't hurt uh, to do it. Um, and then let's see the SIP profile. I don't think there's anything fancy about the SIP profile. I don't think there's anything fancy here, just to make sure uh, BFCP is selected. And I think 8.6 and beyond, BFCP's on the standard uh, SIP profile already. Okay, so next let's go take a look at, um, I'll show you the trunk one more time, just so you get it on video. run through there and again nothing fancy here okay let's go take a look at the expressway C now we're going to look at the zone pointing back to call manager so this is my CMR CCM neighbor so you can see my port number there 5065 I just showed you on that SIP security profile um, Nothing too fancy here. I think that's it. The zone profile, make sure you choose 861 or above. And that already has the BFCP and things. It used to be you had to do a custom um, and choose BFCP and a couple other things. But that kind of creates your, you know, um, good interoperability uh, for, for call manager. And, okay, let's go back. And now we're going to go, we're going to hop to the trunk or the traversal zone um, to the E now. So 
there's some documentation that says to go create a different um, traversal client and server over to the E, but I haven't found out really exactly why they, they talk about encryption and things like that. But this this the if you already have MRA going again, I do. Uh, you can push the calls through this traversal zone already, and it is already encrypted, right? Because we have to set that up. We have to do uh, digital sign digital certificates to get this traversal zone up. So, in my opinion, as it states now, and I'm not an expert at this, but this is already um, uh, this is already encrypted. So, I don't create another zone uh, because it's not needed, in my opinion. Again, nothing weird here. Okay, and then let's hop over to E, and let's go to zones again. I'm going to look at the zone pointing back to the C now. There it is right there. And this is your standard stuff when you set up MRA. Okay, and then let's take a look at the DNS zone. This is the zone that's pointing out to the Internet. Okay, I do a TLS verify on this particular DNS zone. So the only thing that this trunk right, can, can call right now is uh, WebEx.com. And there's a TLS verify on here as well. So um, uh, everything's encrypted. Uh, and that's it. So let's go look at the search rules now. So that kind of covers us for all the trunks. And then call routing. Let's go to SIP route pattern. Very simple here. Just a wildcardwebex.com. Going to point to the trunk, the expressway trunk. <coughs> and then um, the other thing I'll show you here is when you do a scheduled meeting in, and I don't think I have that up, but uh, when you do a scheduled meeting, here's a scheduled meeting. You can see that the video address, it's not like a room anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a dialed number string, a nine-digit number string, and then at whatever your domain is, right? whatever the customer domain is. So we do another route pattern in here, and it's our traditional route pattern. Let's go to route hunt, and we want to go to route pattern. And what I did here is just a uh, seven, some steering digit. Just grab any steering digit uh, that you want um, is the way I do it. And and nine wild cards there. And then you're going to point that to Expressway. Obviously, choose off net here. We don't want to provide outside dial tone or anything like that. And then we just let it loose, right? That's all we do. We're going to send it over. And then we'll deal with kind of transforming it over there in Expressway. Okay, so those are the two things that we're going to get things out of. Uh, so let me bring up a Jabber client here. And you can see here, um, this is a scheduled meeting. So there's my number. And what I want to do in Jabber, what we want our customers to do, right, is just dial 7. That was the steering digit. And then, you know, this number, and I just have it there. I'll just go ahead and click that. And you can see I get right in there. Okay. So, um, and in the other way, if I went to my meetings and uh, let's see, my personal room, there's the other, that's the other way in, right? If we're going to our personal room and that's when that webex.com SIP, remember that SIP route pattern over here is going to catch this guy right there. So I can also do that and everything's going to work okay. Paste that in. Uh, I think I'm missing an A there. And I can dial that, and that's going to go right in as well, too. See, that's working. Okay. Um, so what happened here um, when I dialed the number string, the nine-digit number string, is one other thing that I have here, and that is the transform. Oh, let's follow the WebEx all the way through first. Let's follow that. Let's just do one at a time here. So let's do the dial plan, and we're going to do search rules. So we saw those search rules with the route patterns and call manager, and then we're going to route 
uh, this this guy right here, CCM to CMR Cloud, that's what I'm calling it. And you can see in here what I have here. I just have a regular expression, and then I basically have, you know, er anything at anything uh, dot. I know it's hard to see that dot webex um, dot com, and then anything if there's a port number or something like that. Call managers like to do that sometimes, so you have to add this this guy right here because you're going to take it off. So basically, we're, 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 with regular expressions, we're saying, hey, in between these brackets or, or uh, these uh, parentheses here, this is number one, this is number two, and then this is number three parentheses. So I'm, I'm, what I'm doing here is just saying, hey, um, put one and then an at symbol and then go ahead and put two and three and see I'm, I'm leaving off, I'm leaving this off over here. Um, uh, and then stop, and then obviously we're going to go across to the E, right? Traversal zone client. All right, and then once we get it in the E, we're going to catch that guy, and we're going to go right over to the DNS zone. So there's, I named it the same. See, I got the same exact guy right here. I just copy and pasted it. And then I replace, I do that, stop, I, I kick it out to the DNS zone, which we saw earlier. All right, that's really it. Okay, um, and then uh, let's go back to the C, and I take the same route pattern, the same, same, the same search rules, um, but before on that on a scheduled meeting where you dial the nine digits, I'm doing one thing here in this little transform. So I'm do a little transform first. So this this you know nine digits seven and nine digits come in, and then what I do is I just little regular expression again anything with seven that has nine digits right and then a dot anything over here to catch any port numbers uh, that are coming across from call manager and I'm just you know doing you know put the one in here the one is remember anything between the first uh, parentheses here which will be the number so we're leaving off the seven and then just a append uh, uh, at you know whatever the customer domain is dot webex dot com, right? And that's really it. And then you know after it does this, it's going to catch that same uh, search rule because it's going to do the transform first, and it's going to come over here and then um, grab that search rule and, and and then go on. So that's really it. That's um, in a nutshell. That's how you do it. It's very easy. Um, and uh, any questions, just uh, give me a holler. This is Anson Garcia, and I'd like to thank you for watching.